visit from St. Nicholas by Clement Clark Moore. Twas the night before Christmas, went all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn, there arose such a clatter. I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave luster <laughs> gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer with a little old driver so lively and quick I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles his coursers they came and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now, dancer, now, dancer, now prancer, prancer, and Vixen. On, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder, on Donder and Blitzen. Blitzen. To, the to the top of the porch, to the top, to the top of the wall. Of the wall. Now, dash now dash away, dash away, dash away, dash away all. all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the house, top the coursers they flew, with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. <laughs> As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes how they twinkled, his dimples how merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. Sincerest apologies, but we feel we must pause here in order to address a thorny issue. A Visit from St. Nicholas contains a passage that was considered harmless when the poem was originally published, but which many feel has aged badly and so is frequently cut from contemporary readings or publications of the work. We want to present this classic work unbridged, but we also want to be thoughtful of those parents who might not want their children exposed to material that might be considered inappropriate. This conundrum also raises philosophical questions for us about the essential morality or immorality of art. Is it an artist's duty to show the negative consequences of harmful actions, or can they be simply presented as part of the work without comment? Jojo, wrap it up! I am! Another difficult issue this passage raises is the change in societal attitudes towards certain behaviors in previous eras. We do want to be thoughtful about the way we present destructive behavior, especially in work aimed at children. But I think it's dishonest and potentially unhealthy to pretend that some things, which we know now to be harmful, were treated in the past as no big deal. Jojo! So, we are going to present the controversial passage here, and if you don't want the little ones to hear it, this would be the time for earmuffs. Ready? Three, two, one. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. That's it! Everyone may now safely enjoy the rest of the poem, uninterrupted by anything except our stupid jokes. He had a broad face and a little round belly <laughs> that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. <laughs> he's, he's real! He's real! I have to rethink everything I know about reality! A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word but went straight to his work, and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew, like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy, Happy Christmas, Christmas to, all, to all, and to and all, to all a, good a good night! night. A Visit from St. Nicholas was read by Lilac Lease and featured Parker Carver as St. Nicholas, with childish background shenanigans devised and performed by Addison Butler, Parker Carver, Lucas Dunlap, Lilac Lease, Jojo McAnally, 
Jacob Martinez, and Andrea Meyer.